So we already talked about the incomplete dominance. So this is done. And you saw a video about the aliens, and I give you a few examples. And you have to do a small homework to try to solve all of some of them. And I remind you that these are examples of non-Mendelian inheritance pattern. Now, in this video, we are going to work with codominance. So, and if you remember, incomplete dominance and codominance can uh, can look very similar. And if you read the Campbell biology, you will see that at the molecular level, we still don't have, although we can define it in the phenotypes, at the, at the molecular level, it can be a little bit more complicated. And when I said at the molecular level, when they study the mechanisms, the genes and the proteins and how they interact. However, here we know that for these exercises, we define them as the traits when they incomplete the uh, dominance is when the traits are blend and with the codominance are when the, the traits are just discrete. And as I said before, in this case, they will look very similar. However, uh, here they will be, they will not similar. Here you can see that you have traits. This one is a white phenotype. This is a black phenotype. And here, instead of being gray, that it will be the incomplete dominance. Mm -hmm. Here we have something similar. Here we will have a dotted phenotype. I don't know if define it like, yeah, with tiny squares, something like that. And you have something similar with a different type of horses that we will just talk about that later. But again, this will be a, this will be the codominance. So both genes are discrete, uh, both phenotypes are discrete, and when they are together, they form another phenotype, but it's not the intermediate, it's not the blended. Okay, now similar to the incomplete dominance, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this uh, example of inheritance. So here, uh, as you can see here, both alleles contribute to the phenotype. And here you can see that both are contributed to the offspring. And this is the uh, the real phenotype, how it will look like. So it doesn't look gray. It looks like white and black. And so you can see both dots. Uh, so remember, both are expressed, the white one and the black one. However, neither of the alleles are dominant. Um, remember when you cross like here, two organisms, you will find the two phenotypes in the offspring. Um, as I show here. Okay, now let's try to solve this exercise. And we are going to use as a model organism horses. And, and remember, it's an example of codominance. So you can read the question. And I, I'm going to show you a few pictures. Here you can see the phenotype, and here you can see uh, the, the genotypes. So you have gray horses with this genotype, and you can also have white horses. And these two are codominant, and the heterozygous is this uh, horse that looked like has uh, dots. And the question that you have is, knowing that is a example of codominance, you have to cross a white horse with an, this dotted Appaloosa horse and give the genotypes and phenotype and the ratio and percentage. So it's very easy and uh, let's try to do it. So again, first thing that you need to remember, you have these white horses and the white horses, according to the previous information, will have this uh, genotype 
and the Appaloosa horses will be the heterozygous. So you will get these phenotypes. And based on that, you have to answer what is the geno uh, the ratio and the percentage. So let's try to solve it together. So the first thing, as usually, you have to write to, to draw your pun square. Here you have the white horses, and here you will have your Appaloosa horses. And this will be our first genotype, the second one, the third one, and the fourth one. So it's very easy. Now, as usually, I'm going to show you here the first percentage. So you have 50% that are um, that are Appaloosa. Why? Because so you have here 25. Let's put it maybe with red. 25% and 25%. So again, 25 and 25. This give us. You cannot. This is how you get 50%. And also you get. Let's put that in blue if it's easier. 25 and 25 and you can get again the other 50 percent now the ratios will be very easy again so 50 and 50 percent will give us a one to one ratio so pretty easy so here you have one and one uh, sorry one and one and let's have colors here one and one so it will be Two divided by two, so this give us a, just a ratio of of one, yeah, one and one. So pretty easy. Now let's try to answer the phenotypes, and I want that you start thinking about it. And I will erase this. And you can now let's try to answer it. So here it will be an Appaloosa. This one too, based on the genotype, and here you will get a white one. So these two will be white one, and we will have very similar ratios than before. So there will be 50% Appaloosa and 50% white, and you will get a ratio of one to one. Now I'm going to give you another example of codominance that is the sickle cell anemia and the sickle cell anemia as you know is a genetic disorder that affect um, the hemoglobin so this protein that is in your blood that is the one that captured the oxygen so a person that has a, this genetic disorder that have a mutation in the hemoglobin is not able to capture as much oxygen. So in this case, uh, normal cells will have this genotype, while a sick cell, a person with a sick cells, will have this SS uh, genotype. And when we cross them, you will get half, 50% and 50% chances of being a normal or being a carrier. However, and they will have this, this genotype that you can see here, where normal and carrier. So remember, this will be normal, this will be sick, and this will be a normal, but it's a, that is a carrier. So in our words, the juice red blood cells will be normal, will have the normal hemoglobin that it will be able to capture oxygen. Here, the sickle cells are the ones that the uh, red cells, red blood cells are not working well, so they cannot capture the oxygen well. And finally, you have these ones, the codominants, that you have some of them that uh, will be able to capture the oxygen and other ones that they don't do it as well. And of course, this one, the homozygous for the this uh, allele 
or the SS will be the ones that are the ones that are sick. Okay, this is a, a an exercise that you can solve before the class, and again, you will have to list both genotypes and phenotypes, and in addition to that, here you can draw uh, the uh, gametes of the female and the gametes of the uh, male to try to uh, solve this Punnett square. And as usually, if you have any question, uh, please let me know, and I will post a video about it.